Yet another day of rain. So I'm in my car today because we have the beginning of Jurassic World Alive Season 5 has officially begun. So I kind of want to go over just a little bit about how this works if you're newer to the game or if you're a seasoned veteran. It's always good to have a little bit of a refresher. Know that if you haven't played yet, go ahead and restart your game because your trophies should be reset. If you were above 4,500, they would be reset down to 4,500 plus 50% of however much you had over the 4,500 mark. So again, if you had 5,000 trophies before today, you should be at 4,750 whenever you start. This tournament is going to run from today, January 17th, until February 4th. And again, the very valuable Erlichosaurus DNA is going to be your prize for finishing above 2,500 trophies, which is very doable. I, it's been so long since I was down in the 2,500 range, but I, I just feel like that's a pretty generous number for a vast, vast, vast majority of the player base to be able to reach probably has already surpassed it. But a little bit of a breakdown. First place, 250,000 coins, 7,000 hard cash, a premium incubator, and 5,000 Ehrlichosaurus DNA. 5,000 is a lot, but just remember that when you reach these really high levels, and, and make no mistake, the people that are competing for first place are at really high levels. You're probably using 200, maybe 500 Ehrlichosaurus DNA per fusion. And if you think of how frustrating it is for you whenever you're trying to create a legendary or your first unique dinosaur and you get those tins. Now imagine having to do that with Ehrlichosaurus and you can see that 5,000, well, yes, very helpful, doesn't go a real long way. Second place, everything is the same except for you're gonna get 4,000 Ehrlichosaurus. And then third place, again, everything is the same except you're gonna get 3,000 Ehrlichosaurus DNA. And then it's gonna kind of break down from there if you have over 5,000 trophies, you're going to get 2,500 coins, which isn't a lot these days, considering we have the coin event going on currently, which you can get up to 25,000 coins per day. 500 hard cash, which is always nice, an epic incubator, and then 500 Ehrlichosaurus, and then 4,750 is gonna be the next break point dropping down to 4,500. This is the first time that you don't get the hard cash or the coins. You're just going to get an epic incubator and 500 or Lycosaurus. And then everybody else who's between 2,500 and 4,500 is going to get a rare incubator as a reward with 250 or Lycosaurus DNA. So pretty fair and it, it spreads the wealth out. So pretty much everybody I think is going to get at least a piece of the pie in some form or fashion. So with all of that being said, just to show you, I went back to actually, I actually made it over 4,900 trophies last night. I lost a little bit and then I got back over and then the reset happened and I've played one battle so far, this, two battles so far this morning, I won one, lost one. But I do have an incubator ready to go. So I'm gonna crack this open. It's just a three hour incubator. So, you know, hit or miss on these as far as useful DNA. Stiggy Moloch Gen 2, Draco Rex is nice. And that will be the end of that. I do have a 12 hour that I need to start cooking. I typically wait for my 12 hours as the incubator, like I usually get up around seven o'clock in the morning. So I save my 12 hour incubator for sometime after 7 p.m. at night. That way the vast majority of the timer runs out while I am sleeping. And um, so here we go. I'm going to jump into battle. Now, I will say that where I am in the battle arena is a mess. And it's not a mess for a bad reason, but it's a mess because the range of opponents that I can potentially get is so wide here. You know, I could get, if I have a plus or minus 200, I could get someone down around 4,500, or I could get someone that's almost 5,000, but I think 5,000 or 5,500 was the cap for the maximum that you could start your trophies with. So potentially, I could be facing people that are significantly stronger in the battle arena than, than my team. And I, I'm starting to get a pretty decent team put together. But I do want to play, we'll go three. We'll go best out of three, but we'll do all three tournament battles, whether I lose my first two or not. 
and we'll just see how this goes. Maybe you guys can give me some tips on what I could have done better because I am sure I will make some mistakes here. I'm going to open with my Endoraptor. I had a Tenantorex, I think I had Delta, and Stego. So what I'm gonna do here is when I have Indoraptor versus Indominus Rex, is I like to just go ahead and do an attack first. That's just the way that I do it. And I'm, I'm just banking on them not hitting through my evasive stance with a cloak. So then on turn two, and that was unfortunate that I critted, but it didn't hit through the cloak. So on turn two, I'm going to use my evasive stance. And I mean, I think if I were to rewind this tape, and I'm, I'm just banking on them not hitting through my evasive stance with a cloak. So now I'm gonna come out. Um, Indominus Rex is immune, so I'm just going to try to do as much damage as possible while hoping they do as little damage as possible. Uh, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. So I'm gonna use my superiority strike. The reason why is just in case my opponent wanted to swap out into something that was faster than my dinosaur, I wanted to be able to get the jump on them. That was the whole reason why I did superiority strike there. Now it's one to one, but like I'm so far behind at this point in time that it's kind of ridiculous. Um, most likely going to get knocked out here. I'm not going to get a second turn, so I'm just going to try to do the most damage that I can potentially do. Like I said, I'm most likely getting knocked out here. And this should pretty much be a good game because like, I'm gonna attack, but my opponent will probably do instant charge, which had a good chance of knocking me out. The reason why I wasn't worried about it is because at this point, like, I'm so far behind the eight ball that I'm, I'm basically conceding this match. When Indominus Rex hit through my evasive stance with the crit, which is the one thing that I said that I was planning on not happening, that pretty much was game at that point. It, there wasn't really any chance for me to come back from that with the team that I had and with the team that I was going up against. I could have brought in Stegodius. I don't know that it would have had any change on the outcome of that game, but that's just one. And I only lost 26 trophies out of it. Now this one's gonna be a little more difficult. I'm gonna start with Stegodius. I don't like the build of my team here um, because I don't like having both my impact and run dinosaurs at the same time. That, that doesn't, I don't like it. Slowing impact, I always forget. I, I don't see Toro Moloch very often, and I honestly forget what its movesets are. I should have just gone Rampage and taken the most damage possible. Um, probably going to get stunned here. That's on me. Impact and Run might even finish me off. No. Okay. And then Spino... Spino Tezuka's. I can't ever remember which Spino I'm talking about. And um, I'm gonna get bled. I'm not gonna go first. Superiority strike, I'm, I'm gonna bleed out here. So it didn't really matter what I did. Both my moves were one times damage. But the, the good news out of this is that it sets me up potentially to get a nice impact and run off. So now my decision becomes, do I go with Delta or Dilo? I'm gonna go with Dilo here. Cause I think Dilo can knock out multiple dinosaurs where Delta cannot. That was the sole reasoning behind my decision here. And I had the one turn, one turn set up ready to go. We'll see how this plays out here. This is, um, my opponent, okay. So I'm gonna have to land, I have two options here. I could impact and run, but then my delta is gonna get slowed. So what I'm banking on here is landing the stun, and I did, which is great because now 
I'm going to impact and run out of this matchup while knocking out my opponent. And that's going to put Delta in a position to potentially get knocked out here. But I wanted to take the 2-1 two, the two lead. I didn't want them to get their Monostego fired up and ready to go. And this actually works out really well because I'm going to get the jump on this Uterinex and do a lot of damage to it. Now I'm going to get the instant charge against me, but just in case I don't get stunned, I got completely wiped out. But that's going to be nice because, again, it gives me a setup move for... Ooh, that's going to leave him with 13. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Because now he can impact and run out of this while taking a decent chunk out of me into Tora Moloch, which I should be able to take out Tora Moloch. The question is, I'm not going to risk it. The reason why I'm not risking this is because they do have that right there, the counterattack. I didn't want to leave. Now I just have to hope that Impact and Run doesn't do more than 2100 damage, and I feel like it does 22. That doesn't matter, because even if I get stunned, which I did, I can still come out with my instant charge. Even if they swapped into something else, I was going to get the victory. So that was really close. That was a well fought battle there. Um, I don't know that I made any misplays. But I did get the victory, so that's always great. So now that evens it up. One each as I go into this third and final battle. And really all I'm looking for, well, I always want to win. But what I'm mainly looking for is to get one of their dinosaurs knocked out so that I fulfill my daily battle requirements of 10 battles won. Here we go with the final battle. One win, one loss. And I, I, I'm okay with this team. This build is, is all right. I have no idea still if Tenanto Rex is a good lead, so I'm going to lead with Stego Diaz, which I don't think is a great lead anymore. The reason why I say that is because too many times opponents will lead with Spinos and they just shred through Stego. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to do Rampage. Okay, so I hit three evasive stance. Now my opponent is most likely going to do defense shattering rampage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my attack and come in with a shield behind the defense shattering rampage, which happened. And then I'm gonna put up my shield because now defense shattering rampage is on a cooldown. Third, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the, what is it, the Thagomizer here? Because Indoraptor's cloak or invincibility or evasion, evasion is gone on this turn. That's gonna free me up for the free attack. Now, I'm gonna go with superiority strike in case they swap out, which they didn't. And I'm very happy to trade Stego Diaz for Indoraptor. Uh, to me, that's a great trade because I'm gonna lose Stego Diaz here. Now I could have gone with Rampage in case they swapped out and done a lot more damage, but I wanted to do the superiority strike so that I went first if they had swapped out to try to save their Indoraptor. And I'm probably gonna get crit hit here. Um, I'm gonna go superiority strike just in case they went for lethal wound. I probably That was probably a mistake. I should have just gone with Rampage because I'm gonna get bled out anyways. And doing the more damage would have been more beneficial to me. But, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Delta. And I'm going to expose my Dracorex Gen 2 a little bit earlier than maybe I'd want to. Unless I get the knockout here. Now watch this. Watch this. This could be good. This could be really good here. I love this potential. Ah, and they bring in Stego Diaz. This could have been so great. Because I'm going to do, like, roughly... I don't know. Like, how much damage is that? I'm going to potentially do 3,000 damage right here. And if they'd had something less than a tank at the back end of their lineup, I would have wiped them completely off the map right here with that one-two punch. That would have been great. 
Uh, I'm gonna lose my Draco Rex Gen 2, which is which is fine. I think I'm in good shape here based on the dinos that I have left. Uh, like I said, Draco Rex Gen 2 is gonna get knocked out here. And then my question becomes, do I risk it and go Delta Superiority Strike into, I'm not even gonna risk it. I, I, I probably could have gone Delta Pounce and then swap in, but I think this is a better decision right here because I'm gonna get rid of that shield I mean, it does so much damage. Superiority Strike, I should be able to survive. As long as Stego doesn't crit here, I think we win. Um, I could go that route. Again, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go the Superiority Strike. That didn't matter. I hope that I'm faster than... Are we the same speed? 124? I don't know. We're, no, we're nowhere near the same speed, but this should be a pretty big hit. Winner, winner. So there we go. Two wins, one loss. Welcome to Season 5 of Jurassic World Alive. And that was a nice win. 36 trophies is... That, that's a good win. And I'm going to be able to open my daily incubator. Typically decent DNA out of this. Handful of coins, handful of darts. Okay. Mira, getting close to level 22. Irritator's great, always take that. And Stiggy Mohawk for 100, very good. All right guys, that's all I've got for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that my insight and in going through each of my moves helps you guys in the battle arena. And, and, and if not, I hope you learned from my mistakes, if, if there were any there. I, I don't know of any glaring mistakes, but uh, like I've said before, I'm not the best dueler in this game. Anyways, hopefully it stops raining tomorrow, and we'll see you on the next one.